Hi, this is Raheem Zulfikar Ali and in this video we will learn different types of cell references. So let's get started. So we will discuss six different types of cell references and let me write it for you cell references type. So in Microsoft Excel as you know that every cell has an address and when we write any kind of a formula or a function we used to define correct type of cell reference. If we don't define correct type of cell reference, sometimes it, it might give an error, but most of the times it fetches the answer, but that answer is not correct. So that this, this particular topic is very important to understand that uh, whenever uh, we learn any application fundamentals, they should be strong. And when we go to the advanced level and putting them in the scenarios, uh, our logic should not be weak. Okay, so this topic is very important. There are six different types of cell references and let me write them and also give you the example. So the first one is relative. The second one is absolute. The third one is kind of a mixed where half of the address is relative and half of the address is mixed. Uh, sorry, absolute. And then we have fourth category, which is the 3D references. Fifth is the structured structured references number six is the external references these are six most common uh, references you will see when you use Microsoft Excel now what are those examples where we can imagine that how it looks like so the first is let's pick cell a1 it's it will be a simple and relative in absolute it comes with a dollar sign in mixed mixed has a two types either we lock the column or we lock the raw so it looks like something this first type and the second type is this one okay the 3d reference is a kind let's suppose if we insert a sheet and if I write a number in D4 which is 100 and if I go back to sheet 2 and I want to take a number from sheet 3 and uh, from multiple uh, sheets in a same cell address so it will look like this a 3d reference okay structured references those ref references where we convert our normal ranges into a table format so you will get an idea when you will see my recorded video on tables so when we select any kind of a data and we convert them into a table so it creates a structured reference and how it looks like let's get an idea in this video so first a table name comes and then a column name come inside a square box okay square brackets then external cell references for example if you are creating any kind of a financial model or an mis report or a finance report okay or a dashboard so sometimes users link all those numbers from an, a different excel workbook so these are called the external cell references for example if i open a new workbook and if i go back to the my previous excel workbook and i come back to again that new workbook so these kind of a references we look at into is first it shows the workbook name then sheet name and then absolute address so these are external cell addresses so these are most common six different types of cell cell references types where uh, we need to understand understand them very strongly so that whenever we write any formula function or even uh, on the back end in data validation or conditional formatting we put the logics we should know that which kind of reference will give our uh, the correct results okay now let's uh, go to the example for relative and absolute in this particular video and for the other remainings uh, when we cover the topics in the next module regarding the formulas and functions i will quote all those references there so let's get start with first the relative and absolute example and let's compare them so let me just create a data for relative and absolute so for example if we have some numbers and we have numbers like 100 200 300 400 just an imaginary numbers to give you an example and uh, let's suppose we want to calc we want to calculate a square for each of the number and for the absolute let's suppose we want to calculate 10 percent of each of the number and get the desired result or amount okay all right so how to calculate a square basically uh, if I multiply the J4 with the same cell I will get the square right and how to copy and paste uh, you can select 
this output cell and shift down arrow key and press the control D button. This is the first strategy to copy paste downwards. The other thing is that what you can do is because it's an adjacent data altogether. So you are active on the output cell and this particular dot which is on active cell on the right bottom is called fill handle. So you can just double click on it and it will copy and paste downwards. Okay. And the last strategy to copy paste is press control C on the output cell and then select the range and press control V. Right. There are three different strategies. You can adopt any one. So we have calculated a square and if, if I go back into the cell, you can just double click to get into the editing mode or you can press F2 to get into the editing mode where you can change again if you want to do some changes. So here the formula is and it's not a function because it's a, it's will it will be called as a formula because uh, the user is trying to make a logic and fetching an answer. Okay. So the J4 is being multiplied by J4 and if I go one step down now there is no J4 it's J5 again J6 and J7. Why is it so? Because relative reference are those reference when you copy paste them on your Excel sheet downwards or rightwards or anywhere it will change their address accordingly. Okay. Whereas if you see the absolute example for example if I want to calculate 10% of each of the amount so I will write a formula like O4 which contains a number and P2 contains a percentage. So if I multiply these two numbers I will get definitely uh, the 10 rupees or a you can say ten dollars for the amount of hundred but if I copy paste this formula oops I got the error why is it so because here on this step it should not be p3 it should be p2 and if I go to the next step again it should be not a p4 it should be p2 so this means that the user needs to understand that p2 should be used every time when he or she copy and paste this formula downwards so this p2 must contains a dollar sign or you can say this p2 must be lock so we called it absolute now to make it absolute p2 what you can do is you can either clear, click on the middle or anywhere so your cursor should be here and press f4 key so two dollar sign will be uh, placed by the shortcut key okay in some of the laptops you have to press function key first and then f4 uh, in in the, the modern uh, hp laptops or other laptops you can just directly press f4 so do uh, see what your laptops is uh, have a settings okay so i have made this cell address as an absolute now when i copy paste again this logic downwards now all the answers are coming correctly why because you can see that now p2 is not changing anywhere right so this is absolute so the first difference between relative reference and absolute reference is that relative reference does not contain any kind of a dollar sign whereas absolute contains two dollar sign to lock the num uh, to lock the raw and column okay and the second difference is that the relative reference whenever we copy relative reference to any other part of the excel sheet it will change the address but absolute reference will not change the address it will remain same even if i copy and paste it here for example it's still the p2 whereas relative reference has been changed to q11 right so i hope in this video you have got the your answer uh, related to and the concept related related to the relative and absolute references and these are commonly six different types of cell addresses let me cover one more logic here in this video is as in previous video i told you that formula is a user made whereas function is is built in by the microsoft which contains some set of instructions now function whenever you write any function for example if i write if function and i open the round bracket you can see a small tooltip uh, pop-ups right and if for example any function we look up again the small tooltip pop-ups so basically this particular thing which you are seeing on your screen as a tooltip its correct name is function syntax we see function syntax and every function syntax has certain arguments to fill and there are two types of argument some of the arguments are compulsory to be filled by the user correctly and there are some optional argument as well 
on the back end all optional argument has a default value okay so how to distinguish between a compulsory function argument and a small function argument so as you can see here in this particular example if function has three arguments first is that user will define the logical test second is the user will define the value if true and the value if false to separate the function arguments we put the comma sign as, as this is the part of the structure okay so if you break any rule of this function syntax definitely you will get an error so first the user will define a logical test val then value if true and then value if false and every function of excel does not contains three arguments some uh, some of them contains four arguments some of them contains only one some of them contains two or three okay but how to distinguish that which one are compulsory and which one are optional so when you see a function argument enclosed with the square bracket as you can see here in in the value of true and value of false they are enclosed with the square bracket so these are called the optional arguments where the user can skip this argument without filling anything and he will get the answer and whereas the logical test which does not contain the square bracket it should be filled by mandatory or a compulsory to be filled by the user correctly right okay so let's end this video and i hope you got the topic and uh, the correct concepts for cell references types and the function syntax thank you